Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Linode. You can build it on Linode. Get started today with $100 in free credit for Mac Voices listeners and viewers at linode.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is another one of our holiday gift guide shows. We're going to do a bunch of these over the holidays to give you some ideas of things that maybe you want to give to family and friends or maybe to get for yourself. It doesn't really matter as long as you are happy doing it. So the rules are pretty simple. Uh, The panel cannot pick, this panel cannot pick anything picked by a previous panel. And whoever picks one, you know, they're free to agree that, hey, that's a great gift, but they can't claim it then as theirs. They have to pick something new. And this year, we're doing it just a little bit differently because we're not requiring everything to be tech. Um, We prefer that, but we're also recognizing that, yeah, sometimes people don't live by tech alone, even though it seems like we try. Anyway, so let's find out who's here. And right now, we're one member short. Um, He's having a couple connectivity problems. If he gets here, great. If not, you'll see him on another show. But with us this time around, first up, and I'll go according to my screen, as always, Mr. Jeff Gamut. Jeff, welcome. Good to have you. I, I am so happy to be here. It is always just so much fun to to get to hang out with with you and everyone else that you bring on to Mac Voices. And doing the holiday gift guides is always a lot of fun. Also, I'm glad to hear that uh, that you have lifted the requirement that everything has to be tech related because I totally didn't pay attention to that anyhow. Yeah, well, that's true. That's one reason I decided to lift it. That way, people didn't feel guilty. As oh, I wasn't going to feel guilty. Yeah, yeah. Nobody ever did. But <laughs> also joining us, Mr. Josh Centers. Josh, good to see you as always. Thanks for having me aboard again. Should we bring up the fact that you're doing an experiment with this show? Yeah, I, uh, I'm a little mad at Apple right now over the uh, the crap that happened with uh, with the Big Sur update. Uh, where b- both of my very expensive Macs, not to brag, just annoyed, but both of my expensive Macs were rendered almost completely useless by their their OC SP server malfunction. So I am currently mm-hmm. broadcasting from a uh, 10-year-old ThinkPad running Ubuntu Linux as an experiment because uh, I decided there on the spot because you know I support my entire family for my income. I cannot afford an afternoon uh, of no productivity. So I need to have a spare machine. So all week I've been working from this machine, uh, mostly successfully, surprisingly. And so uh, if nothing else, I will have a reasonable backup in case something like that ever happens again. Good thinking. Well, if you disappear or get a little weird, we'll know that it's not you, it's the machine. If my beard suddenly grows, you know, 10 feet, you know, this is Linux. This just happens to you. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. The Stallman well, effect. Well, you guys have been here before, so and you heard the rules. So let's just get right to it. Uh, for we, we usually do about four rounds. Um, so round one. And Jeff, I'll give you the first pick. Okay. Uh, man, I have so many things that I put on my list for just in case. Let's go with... Um, the set app gift card. And the reason I put this on my list is because set app is such a useful uh, uh, service because you get tons of, of applications for your Mac for a monthly fee. Uh, you know, so that's awesome. But the thing is, we know that there are a lot of people out there that might be working from home or they might be in a position where their income has been reduced or it's just gone because we live in crazy pandemic time now, but they could really use a lot of the apps that are available through SetApp. So why not gift them some SetApp? So SetApp does gift cards and they do one month for $9.99, three months for $29.97, or you can give someone a whole year for $107.89. I did not know they did gift cards. That is a fantastic idea. Yeah, um, I agree. I wouldn't have brought it otherwise. But no, but seriously, uh, I have I have been thinking a lot about the types of gifts that we can give this year. Uh, 
and and looking at that from the perspective of what's really different this year and what can can we do with with the different things that we're giving to people or doing for people that will help them out. Uh, very nice. Yeah, it's like giving somebody what over a hundred programs all at once for them to experiment with and then decide if they want to continue with it. So yeah. Very right. Yeah. Cool. There's enough in there that depending on what your business is, you could run everything that you need for your business from uh, what's available in setup. Yeah. Good pick. Good pick. Yeah. I, I pull from setup all the time. We, we have a subscription at tidbits and it's a tremendous resource, you, you know, and there were some really incredible apps in there. Uh, you, you know, you know, some of them, you know, aren't the biggest winners, but you know, they have things like uh, Brett Terpstra's Mark is in there. You mm-hmm. is in there, which is a fantastic uh, document. I don't know what you call it. Text editor, document manager or something like that. Um, Squash is a really great little uh, image compression app that I use. It's a fun little one I reviewed for tidbits. Uh, so th- there are some great gems in there. It's well worth the money every month for, for set app. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So Jeff, Jeff scores big on his first uh, pick. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Josh, what do you got for his first round? All right. So uh, these days I'm an editor at both Tidbits and The Prepared, which is a prepping website. So I'm trying to to cross the two. I'm trying to cross the streams for the Christmas guide. And also, I mean, it's been a hell of a year and a year of hell. So uh, I would like to recommend some things to help people get better prepared for, you know, whatever. And one of the things I really like, um, I don't know if you've ever seen these, this is a, a Jackery, which has kind of become oh, like yeah. the Xerox of these sort of yeah. power stations. Um, and this is a great little doodad. This is the Jackery 160. I think I got this on a prime day sale for, I think, uh, I think around $120. I think it usually goes for like 130, 150, something like that. You know, hunt around for sales. Now, I'll tell you the bad thing up front. This will not power uh, like a freezer or a big fridge or an air conditioner. It won't do high wattage stuff. This one won't. The, um, the There's ones that are much more expensive that will. Uh, wh- what I like to do, I have a gas powered generator uh, for, for real emergencies. And, and then I have this for little stuff. And see... One of the things it can do, it has, you can see an AC socket over here that I can turn on and it will power lights. It will power a mini fridge. Uh, There's lots of little things that will power. And if you look at the front here, there are uh, two USB-A ports and one USB-C port and also a 12 volt out. And there's also a 12 volt input. You can actually charge this. uh, There's a solar panel you can get for it or you can just, you know, rig like, I think it needs like about 100 watt solar panels, so a pretty large one. But you can charge this through solar. It has a light on the side. I won't turn this on, but uh, this is a great little thing to keep around your house uh, in case you lose power. You need to charge your phones. You need to charge your tablet, your MacBook, whatever. Uh, you know, some lights. Uh, you know, keep yourself out of the dark. So, um, and these are very durable. My one of my editors at the Prepared, John Stokes, he had. Uh, I think the was this the one the 160 it was like the two he had the one one size up from this and uh they sent him one for to review and they threw it in the back of his truck and forgot about it for like three months before he reviewed it and then pulled it out and it worked just fine so <clears throat> of course the battery ages like any lithium-ion battery will age so I, I really recommend getting the cheaper one um you know if you need something more robust i would recommend a gas generator or you know car batteries or something like that but for the little stuff like camping uh you know brief power outages you know this sort of thing is great very nice very nice hopefully it's one of those things that you won't have to press into service too too often or for too long but if you have the need man that's it doesn't hurt to be prepared (laughs) good job um, so I'm bouncing all over my list here. I'm going to pick. So the HomePod Mini has been released. That's not my pick because that's been already picked. But my HomePod Mini Minis, because I got two of them, came. And in the space of just a couple of days, they have changed the way that I interact with my music. And so as a result, I'm going to make sure that you get a subscription to Apple Music if you don't already have it whether it's through one of the Apple package deals or just the Apple music, but that combined with the HomePod or HomePod minis, 
uh, it's just, I, I mean, I can't begin to tell you just how, how great it is to just be able to say, hey, pl play this playlist play this album somebody mentions an artist to me or I, I read something and just hey play something by and it does and now it's even more throughout the house um my my amazon devices are quickly being disconnected and and supplanted by the homepod minis um and so it's and, and the apple music you know it's one of those things if you don't listen to music well then it's not a good value but if it if it you do it's a great value and especially if you have it integrated which it sort of does by all by itself with any of your apple devices so iphone mac homepod homepod mini um even apple tv you know it's it's like always there it, it just it fits right in there like a glove and so it may seem like an obvious pick but i think that it's so often it gets a little bit overlooked especially with the Spotify issues going on and, you know, Amazon music always throwing things at you. Um, and I, I think for me, one of the big things is just the quality of the HomePod and HomePod mini and how well that integrates with Apple music, as opposed to having to jump through a couple hoops, at least with the Amazon devices, um, with the possible exception of the Sonos one, but that's a whole other discussion. But for the most part, if you're, if you're relying on like the little po hockey puck, Amazon devices, skip that just get the home pod minis order them mm. for every room in the house and and then subscribe uh, to apple music although I, I will point out that apple music works just fine in alexa and has for uh some time i think last year or the year before we bought uh my in-laws uh an alexa and hooked up their app through my apple music subscription and they've enjoyed it quite a bit now i, I would probably get the home pod mini over the regular, over the the Alexa, because I, I don't trust Amazon, I don't trust Alexa, but um, yeah, but that that's an option. If somebody just you know they have their Alexa, they like it, you can still get them an Apple Music subscription, and it'll work just fine. Oh, absolutely! And the the, the hoops I was referring to, Josh, um, you know, yes, you can set it up, but it takes it takes a little bit of effort. It's it's something that mere yeah. mortal, mortals can definitely accomplish. Um, no, whereas not as you don't slick have as to Apple. Yeah, exactly. It's no. not nearly as slick. And if unless you're going to buy that expensive Sonos one, the music, the, the, the audio quality is going to be compromised. And mm -hmm. if, yeah. if you build that ecosystem, it's a whole different thing. So Apple Music is the way to go, at least in my uh, opinion. No, I, yeah, I'm curious about something. So, so you said that the HomePod minis changed how you listen to music. Did you have the big HomePod before or is this your first HomePod experience? No, no, I've, I've had, I have a, a stereo pair of HomePods in the living room oh, okay. and, and that's great. I mean, that, that too was a change, but now the idea that I can go to multiple rooms in my house and, and not have spent an ungodly amount of money to add those other rooms that, you know, it's not a case of that I spend necessarily a lot of time in there. Um, but if I'm, if I'm listening to something and walk from room to room, now I get to hear it everywhere and I can can control it all from my iPhone. It's it's so much easier to control. Just that's what I meant by changing the way I listen to music or podcasts right. or any any other audio programming. Now I can have it have the whole house full of it, um, as opposed to having to carry something with me the the phone. Or, mm -hmm. gee, I have to put it on pause because I'm going to leave the living room and go to the go to the kitchen or the the uh, the bedroom or whatever. So just it it. I, I will report back as we go, but just my first couple of days have really, really impressed me. Chuck, so. I, I am, <clears throat> excuse me, I am with you. I set up a, what I call my poor man Sonos with with an Echo and a couple Echo Dots that I that I added speakers onto and doing whole home audio. And I have to use that term loosely because, you know, I, I live in an apartment, but whole home audio, it worked fine with the Echoes. But the the latency issue would periodically be a problem, and uh, eh, you know it just it it was just okay. And I, I did pick up one HomePod Mini, so I've had that for a, a what twenty four forty eight hours, whatever, from when they came out. And I was really pleasantly surprised with the audio quality on the HomePod Mini, and. Uh, uh, and and I've moved that into my office, and now I'm thinking I need to get a third one so I have one in the bedroom, 
because that whole home audio experience with the home pod and a home pod mini just the audio quality was so much better than what i was getting from the from the my echo setup even having nice speakers connected to uh to these echo dots yeah and and you mentioned the latency issue which is at least so far for me has been a complete non issue same everything has been synced so it's not like you know turning the tv on in one room turning the tv on in another and then you know it, you get that weird the, the weird delay thing been absolutely seamless so yeah i and and i know somebody's going to say well yeah but the echo dots are you know 10 20 or 30 bucks i mean that they, they're going to have them on sale ridiculously cheaply trust me to, to to get that experience you just take that money and and put it toward a home pod even if you have to compromise and maybe get only one or two right now um, as opposed to four or five of the others just build it as as you can afford it because it just makes such a difference, and and I, I we're talking about the home pod pod minis, which is sort of cheating because it's already been there. But to, to back to the reason I pick Apple Music, it just because it integrates. Jeff, I think your word was slick. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. And if yeah. you compare it to an Echo, which is ninety nine dollars, the home pod mini still sounds uh, markedly better. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. And I can tell you from experience that the the Google, whatever they call them now, the Google speakers are crap. That they, they were wonderful for about a year, and, and they don't work anymore. The Bluetooth wasn't doesn't stay connected. Um, they they just suck. I, I had a whole household. I, I had to think how much money I waste on those stupid things, and every single one of them uh, has stopped working reliably. So yeah, just if, if you're going to buy something like that, I don't really recommend any of those sorts of things, but do, get the home pod. I don't have the mini yet, unfortunately, but I do have the, the big boy home pod, uh, about on sale. Don't spend more than 200 bucks on one of those if you get one, but, um, great device, uh, for the Apple ecosystem. I personally really like mine for home automations, uh, because the microphone is very sensitive and so it makes it a lot easier to to work that sort of stuff. If you have HomeKit stuff, you know, the, I think the HomePod Mini is a smash hit. As I, as I explained in my last sh show with Chuck, when I plugged the Home Automation book, you can integrate the HomePod, and I'm presuming the HomePod Minis as well, into your home automations. And so oh, absolutely. You can, sit, you can set scenes where you play certain music and stuff like that. I, I have a buddy who, I swear this isn't me, it's somebody I know at The Prepared, who set up a home automation. So I forget what the trigger word is, but shuts off all the lights in his house and starts playing, let the bodies hit the floor. And, and the idea is if somebody ever breaks into his house, he's going to trigger that and just go after him. So, uh, you know, lots of really cool stuff. You can do a lot of fun stuff. You can do with, with the home pod. Yeah, absolutely. Let's Apple music. Right. Like how, how I tied it back into your pick Chuck. Yes. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Exactly. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Linode. You can build it on Linode. You've heard me talking about Linode for some time now, but you may not have been sure it was for you. Why not find out? First, Linode has everything you need to set up and to deploy your cloud server, regardless of whether it's your first or your tenth. Second, they make it easy with installation packages that basically do it for you for some of the most popular server software out there, like WordPress and Minecraft. Third, there are no surprises when it comes to the bill. You pick the package, you understand your package, and what comes with it. No hidden fees, no unexpected charges. Fourth, 11 data centers around the world, from Toronto to Mumbai, let your server be where you need it to be. Fifth is support. Real human support. 24-7, 365 when you need it. No tears, no handoffs, just the kind of service that you would expect from a world-class hosting organization. There's a whole lot more to Linode, so why not check them out for yourself? Linode.com slash MacVoices will get your questions answered, and when you click the Create Free Account button as a MacVoices viewer or listener, you get $100 in free credit. Get started now and find out just how easy it can be to get your ideas and your cloud server up and running. Linode.com slash MacVoices. Do it right now. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. All right, so that's round one. Um, and we waxed way too poetic about uh, at least one of the picks. Um, so Jeff, take us into round two. 
All right, round two. Um, I, I, uh, let's see. I picked set up last time, so let's go with uh, this, which is the the Rav Power thirty watt charger, and it has USB A and C on it. Now the thirty watt part is a little bit misleading because it's thirty watts total when when both ports are, are being used. So the USB-C port does 18 watts. And um, and yeah, not quite 20, which which is what you want if you're doing a, a new um iPhone at the faster charging. But 18 watts, that's that's I mean that's still respectable. And there are a lot of people out there that are getting new iPhone 12s for uh, uh presents uh, or just for themselves and this will be the first time that they've either had an iphone or this will definitely be the first time they've had an iphone that shipped with the USB-C cable and no charger in the box and uh, and i really think apple should have included the charger in the box this time around because it's a brand new cable but here we are so anyhow this little thing it uh, you know it's small it's lightweight the plugs just fold out fold back in so it's easy to take places with you and it costs twenty one dollars and ninety nine cents on Amazon but oftentimes it will be on sale for cheaper and uh, this is this has proven to be just a handy little tool for me and so uh, um, I can charge a phone and an Apple Watch at the same time from a single plug. I have that charger. It is a fantastic charger. When, when, when I used to leave my house, that's the charger I had in, in the bag. Uh, when I take my kid to school uh, and sit with him uh, on the one day a week, he, he'd go to uh, school. A long story. Anyway, um, yeah, that, that could power my iPad. It could power my iPhone. It could power my MacBook. And I just need the one little, uh, I forget the name of the technology, but the, the one little charger in my bag. And it saved a lot of space and weight. So, yeah, that's a great pick. It's interesting. This is not the first charger we've had picked, and I'm sure it won't be the last. And when we're only in, we're not even deep into the gift guides yet. But the idea that chargers have become a thing that there's competition for features and power levels and everything kind of intrigues me. Um, and, and I like it because there's there's so many good companies out there producing some really, really good devices. And And so, you know, take a good look go through all the gift guides before you buy, because there are going to be a lot of them, um, both gift guides and, and charger recommendations. But just the fact that we even have differing recommendations on chargers is, I think, a very good, healthy thing for uh, for the Apple ecosystem. I agree. Okay. So, Josh, num- pick number two. All right. So, you know, Apple said they they stopped including the charger for the environment. Uh, so here, here's a charger that's actually good for the environment. This is uh, the Rhino Tough. This is a Rhino Tough solar charger. You can see this. So uh, it folds up mm-hmm. into this compact little doodad here, and it's got Velcro on it. And this thing runs about fifty bucks. And you just unfold it, and there are the solar panels. Now you might you might wonder if that, this works with the Jackery. It's not powerful enough for the Jackery. But it will charge uh, iPhone, iPad, um, all those sorts of things. Uh, in here, there's a little pocket. And really, this works best with a, uh, a power bank, especially like a waterproof one, uh, if you're going to work outside. It has a little pocket in here you can stick your, your power bank into. Uh, you probably can't see it. It's too dark in here. But then um, there's two, I don't know if you can see them, there's two USB-A ports in there and a little LED that lights up when it, it's uh, charging. So, and this is the uh, prepareds pick for uh, for solar chargers to fit in a bug out bag. And so it's it's very lightweight. You also notice there's a lot of little carabiners on the side here, which are great uh, to hang it in a tree or what have you. And this is just a great little thing to have around, whether uh, you're a green freak or whether um, you, you like to go camping, you like to do stuff outside and you wanna be able to charge your devices, or if you have a power outage, you can uh, you can keep all your devices charged. I, I use this to charge. Uh, I've charged an iPhone, uh, iPad Mini. I use it to charge a ham radio. What with a lot of bail thing ha- handy talkies. Just a really useful thing to have around. 
Josh, what I, I realize this is going to be very difficult to answer, but an iPhone, let's just say an iPhone, how long would mm-hmm. you have to have have it hooked up to the solar panel to get a decent charge? And I know they're different iPhones, so that's why it's difficult to answer. But you know how I mean right. is, are we are we talking like days or a couple hours to get a meaningful charge? It really depends how bright it is and, and how much sunlight you, you're getting uh, on on the cells. I, I want to say it takes about like eight hours to charge an iPhone. And, and that's why, you know, we really recommend pairing it with a power bank. Uh, and a lot of people already have those. We have two or three just floating around our house. Um, I keep one in my bug out bag that's waterproofed. Now, now a lot of those power banks uh, have a little solar, have some solar cells on them. But they're they're totally useless. I've experimented with those. You leave them out in the sun all day; they'll, they'll never charge. This thing will charge, um, you know, in a few hours. It, you know, solar charging just isn't the fastest thing in the world. That's why I do recommend have a have a power bank or two, especially if they're waterproof. That way, if it does rain or something, you don't have to worry about that. And then you can swap them out. The other thing is too, I, I don't really you typically recommend connecting an iPhone directly to this because, well, you see, you have this thing out in the sun. It's designed to collect sunlight, which means heat, and means your your poor little iPhone is going to get cooked uh, sitting right here, unless you can like kind of rig it and set it up behind there. And so, yeah, I, I really do re- recommend pairing this uh, with a power bank. I don't have, uh, I think it's prepared. If you go look up our bug up bag guy, we we do recommend a waterproof one, but you know, just go through Amazon, you know, and uh, get one that's waterproof, and they're like twenty. $22, something like that. They're, they're super cheap. So that might be something else you could pair with that solar panel. Good pick. Good pick. I like the theme you're doing here. It, it works well. It works really well. Um, so one of the themes that I've been doing um, as we go through this is unfortunately things that have sort of come to light as a result of the pandemic and the lockdown. Um, it's Oh it's my God, you're picking pants to send to me, aren't you? Well, <laughs> Uh, no, but I that that might be my round three pick, Jeff. So so thank you. I Put just give me an idea. Back in the tubing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> um, but no, I there's some things that you know I think have become painfully obvious to us that maybe weren't before. Um, one of those is a reality that a lot of us are living on Zoom calls or Skype calls or Teams calls or whatever, and you really need to try to look as good as you can on these. Uh, I mean, there's just, I'm sorry. It's like, you know, dressing up to, to go to an important meeting. If you look like a bum on the, you know, on the zoom call, that's kind of the impression you're going to leave. So one of the ways is to improve your camera. Now there are a number of these, but the one I'm picking for this round anyway is camo. Um, It is an app that turns your iPhone into a webcam. Now, by definition, just about any iPhone is going to be better than a your the the camera that you have on your Mac or iPad. B probably a whole lot better even than some of the dedicated webcams. Um, and the best part is you can try this for free. You can download the app, and it will run in demo mode. And the only restrictions or thing things that uh, compromises you make it will only give you a 20 uh, 720p signal and it will put a little watermark down in the in the corner that's it other than that it functions completely and and you get a great idea of just what a difference this this little app can make if you pay for it then you unlock all the goodies you unlock the 1080p the 4 the 4k depending on which phone you have of course um, you have a lot of different controls light levels and those kind of things to improve your picture even more um, now it it also the one other thing to understand is this is a subscription app so you're going to be paying around 40 bucks a year for this and there's been a little kickback about that but I would say to you that any webcam that's worth its salt is going to be double, triple that um, if if you want a good one. And right now they are doing; they continue to add features to this 
and your your dedicated webcams, they usually don't add a lot of features. They just you buy it, and whatever there is there is what you get. So take a good hard look at camo, but especially because you can use it in demo mode, and you know it won't cost you anything other than the download from the app from the app store. Um, it is just it is just amazing what what you get out of your camera, uh, or excuse me, your phone's camera compared to what you get for webcam. So camo from um, oh shoot I've I've forgotten it uh, by Reincubate. Um, go check it out. You will not be unhappy. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. Right now, at least last time I checked, you can't even buy a webcam. Right now, they're so in demand and the supply chain is so screwed up. You can't even buy one. Um, now, now, to to the subscription thing now. Okay, I probably wouldn't pay that, frankly. But now I'll say this: I actually wrote a complete review of a similar app to this um, that I paid money for. I, I paid a small flat fee, but I paid money for this app. I'm not going to say which one it was because it's not really their fault. Because su suddenly I know where Zoom and Skype and uh, a bunch of these other companies made some kind of security change where you could not use um, iPhone as a webcam. Like they just locked it out entirely. So I I'm a little mad about it because I spent like two weeks on this review, spent my own money, and then couldn't publish it. I couldn't publish the dang thing. So I'm, I'm a little bitter. But anyway, um, you, you know, for to keep paying them a yearly fee to work around these issues, well, I think that's a little high. It is understandable. And again, you're not going to find a webcam right now. I don't know when you'll be able to find a webcam again. And one thing with this other app I used, uh, using my iPhone as a webcam, I was blown away by the quality. Um, I don't know why iPhone cameras are so much better than what they put in the Mac or even what you can buy unless you, you know, spend a, a small fortune on an SLR or some kind of fancy camera. But, um, you know, even in these fancy M1 Macs they've come out with, the, the camera is still a potato. Um, iPhone is one of the best cameras you can buy bar none. And so you know, you really can't do better in terms of video quality. So yeah, if someone's really using this professionally, it really needs to look their best. Um, yeah, I, I think it's totally justifiable. And it, it also saves some lighting issues. Uh, I mean, lighting is so important. And the fact that you're using the iPhone's camera, it just adapts, you know, so much better than anything else you you would use. And some somebody smart is going to email and say, well, are you using it now? No, I'm not using it now because I have a Lumix DSLR that I use for my webcam um, because of the number of shows I do. So, and, and I've had this set up now for a long time. Camo just came on the scene this year. Um, so that's one reason, but I have tested it out and I, I just think it's a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of software for, uh, for what it does. Chuck, uh, am, am I correct in assuming that you could also use this with the cameras on an iPad or an iPod Touch? Uh, that's a fair question, Jeff. I I've, I've can't say that I've tested that or really looked at it that way, but I wouldn't know why you couldn't. I mean, it's still and, iOS. So yeah, and I'm, sure I'm, I'm assuming so. you can. And, uh, yeah. and so for for that price that you're spending every year, you're getting the flexibility of using whatever iOS device you have as a camera. So you you know if if you're doing something where your iPhone battery is just dead or it has to be used for for another purpose at the time, like someone actually has to crazy as it sounds, make a phone call. You can <laughs> use an iPad. And, yeah. and still have a, a camera that's going to be better than what's in your, your computer. Right. And Josh, I, I'm not asking you to reveal the name of the one you use, but I know one other thing that you, you need to understand, you're going to be using your, your phone as the camera. The app that's running on there does pretty much nothing but turn it into the webcam. You have um, a, control, a control piece of software on your Mac, which is exactly where you want it. Because if if I'm on a video call with you, you don't want me reaching up here and you know playing with it and jostling the mm -hmm. you know the the phone. You want to be able to control it on your Mac, where you know I can I can look over to the side, reach up, just touch the control, and have it do whatever I want it to do. So it's it's one of those. I've seen some camera apps, uh, some apps that do the webcam thing. And that's one of the sort of the fallacies of it is you're, you're doing the adjustments on the phone on, sort of on the fly as opposed to on the Mac. So they, they just it's it's just really, really well thought out for what it does. Mm -hmm. So, 
Uh, I think that's the end of round two. That's the first part of this Mac Voices Holiday Gift Guide. We'll have part two with Josh and Jeff again shortly, and I hope you'll join me then. But until then, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page, and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices, or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.